Yes. Doing a drive eats. It's a it's a rainy day here in Texas, which is a wonderful thing. I'm from Washington, the state of, and it rained. You know what's <laughs> it's one of those things. You know how you have memories in your memories of childhood. There's no rain. It's all, it was sunny every day. <laughs> it was sunny every day in my mind. Riding a bicycle, folding a pop can and putting it on the back tire and riding bicycles around and making it sound like motorcycles. We would wear white t-shirts and pretend to be Tom Cruise in Top Gun. I remember that. And it's always sunny. Baseball. Sunny. I wasn't very good, but. I played until high school and then everybody was bigger than me. I, I was like a big kid until like middle of high school and I stopped growing. Now I'm just like an average 5'9", 200 dad bod. 5'9", 200. It's funny, I'll watch NFL rookies come out and they'll show their stats and be like, this guy's a big dude. He's built well, man. And he's 6'1", 185. And I'm thinking, 185? I'm like 210 right now. And I feel little. Anyway. <clears throat> um, where the heck am I? The, okay. When I was 19, I believe it was 1999. I was living in an apartment with three other guys and a buddy of mine and I shared the master bedroom upstairs. It was a really extra big be master bedroom. So we, we, we had a bed on each side of the room and it was, it felt pretty big. Anyway, one of the nights, it was just one of those nights where we were both in like we, my buddy was going to Western and I was going to the community college and we were both just like chilling in our side of the room with a light on reading books and I was reading Mere Christianity by C.S. Lewis and I got to the chapter that was on pride and I remember reading it and like the whole time thinking to myself like oh yeah that's this person that's that person Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. And then I, I closed the book and I said a little prayer. I go, Lord, show me how much pride I have. And I heard the still small voice of the Holy Spirit say, Justin, go lay down in the middle of the room. And I looked over at my friend and I was like, Ugh, it's gonna be kind of weird, but all right. And I go, hey, buddy, Listen, uh, don't freak out. I'm just, I, you know, I was praying with God here. Uh, he wants me to lay down in the middle of the floor. Now, this friend of mine, he was a Christian too. Born again, Christian. And he, so he was cool with it. He's like, yeah, go for it, no problem. So I lay down. Immediately, I'm smashed to the floor praying in tongues with like a force intense pressure smashing me into the ground I'm like like it was like squeezing me down and I was definitely aware of my friend like watching me the whole time and I'm just like praying in tongues like it was not painful but like squeezing me and I can't squeeze. Jack Black, Nacho Libre. Anyway, so I'm in there, I squeeze. And then all of a sudden, light beams whoosh, come rushing in. And the whole room is flipped over into glorious heavenly light. And I was squeezed so hard that I couldn't lift my head very high. My, my head was about like, whoa, like I could barely get it up. And there, standing right in front of me, were two huge bronzed 
Roman style boots, like soldier boots of an angel. I And I wanted so badly to lift up my head and, and look at the whole creature. But the pressure, the glory was so intense that I could not lift my head higher than seeing the two legs. And I reached out and grabbed onto him and prayed. And then once I grabbed onto him and was able to get my head about that high, boom, it was gone. And I collapsed. The pressure, everything was gone. Uh, oh, oh, I was breathing heavy. And I'm like, I finally, after like a couple minutes, roll over on my back and I look over at my friend and I'm like, did you see that? And he did not. All he saw was me like acting it out. And he was just stunned. He's like, what happened, dude? And I was like, oh, there was an angel. I, uh, and I just, like, I could barely breathe. And I finally crawled back into my bed and prayed and talked to God about it. And it was like, the answer was, that's how much pride you have. A human, even just in one angel, just one. Go read all the stories in the Bible where an angel appears in glory. Mankind immediately falls to the ground. <clears throat> And I wasn't worshiping me, that angel. I knew it was a regular angel. I wasn't worshiping it. I wanted to see it. But the, the glory was so, the light was so intense that I was paralyzed in, in complete immobility, man. One angel, one. So think about when Jesus comes back, it says that he slays the dragon, Satan, the Antichrist, the beast, and all of the devils, and just by one word, be gone. Boom, and they scatter and flee. Praise you, Lord. Okay, here, some, something, somebody needs to hear this because if you're being attacked by demons, which I have also many times before I knew the power of the name of Jesus and before I had experiences with the glory and how powerful the light is. Demons, devils, be gone in Jesus' name. They are more afraid of that than anything. They have to flee. The glory, one man, and one angel, like there's stories of angels appearing and thousands of men falling to the ground. They, 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 the evil entities flee. They can't come out in the light. And there is no greater light than Jesus Christ. He is the light. And you can take authority over an attack in the name of Jesus I cast you into the abyss go to the eternal prison in the name of Jesus and once a devil and a demon get wind and get knowledge that you know how to use the name of Jesus and possibly cast them in the authority given to you by Jesus to cast them into the eternal prison early They'll leave you alone because they, there's a chance that they could get cast into the abyss, which they are not in right now, right? Remember the devils and the demons would flee and yell out at Jesus, have you come before the appointed time? So they know that they have this short period of time to roam around and, and scour the earth to look for something and someone they can devour. But once you claim authority in Jesus Christ, once they know this person has authority given to him and he knows how to use the name of Jesus, they will never bother you again. I used to get so attacked every night. Um, 
Uh, yeah, this is, I'll just say it, like, you remember the, in the Matrix, remember when Neo's sitting there with the agent, and he's like, Neo goes, first of all, F you, second of all, I want my phone call, and then the agent goes, what good is a phone call if you're unable to speak? And Neo's mouth shuts over. And it's like completely closed. Before I really... I knew the name of Jesus. I knew every... You know, born again, even as a little kid, I knew the name of Jesus had power over Satan and the devil. But I didn't know how to really... All I did was just say the name of Jesus. But even that, they were very afraid of. And for some reason, I, I was a kid that was attacked a lot. And, and then especially in my early 20s. Several times I had attacks where my mouth was tried to be covered. Once by a full, like, exactly like the Matrix, where my mouth was plastered over. And several times by demonic hands trying to cover my mouth from saying, Jesus, in the name of Jesus, go, go. But then I listened to Chris Smith, I think his name was, I, I don't know what Chris Smith is doing, he hasn't been um, making videos and podcasts in a very long time, he was back in 2015, 20, when I heard him maybe, 2014, <clears throat> And he, he's like a mid-trip guy, and he's got some things that are I don't agree with. But his main calling was teaching people how to break free from sleep paralysis. Where you would be half dream, half awake, and stuck. That had happened to me so many times because of these attacks. And I would just have to be like, one, two, three, Jesus, and like throw myself out of the sleep state and I said man the name of Jesus it works but why am I how is it that I'm still getting attacked then he taught about how don't just say Jesus even though it'll work they can kind of restrain it you have to direct and rebuke them into the eternal prison in the name of Jesus go to the abyss because they, they're they not there right now. And they will not be fully cast into the eternal prison until Jesus comes back. But, if, 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 hey, there's if there's just the slightest chance that the authority is given and they, they attack the wrong born-again saint and they cross the line, in the name of Jesus, I rebuke you into the abyss. They could go sent, be sent to the prison early. And they do not want that. So they will leave you. And then from that point forward, I think there was a couple of an attempts on my life like that in the past 10 years. 2024? Yeah, like 14, 15. It's almost like 10 years now I've been free from it. Because that the demons are afraid of the authority you have in Jesus' name. And then, think of it, the power of Jesus just saying, one word be gone. Now, now why, why is there this battle? Why didn't the cross end it? Well, Jesus resurrected, took the keys. He holds the keys of death and Hades and hell, and he went up to heaven and cleansed the throne. <clears throat> it's sort of like the in-between time in our court system, right? Trump, guilty on 34 counts of a felony charges. But the sentencing hasn't occurred, right? It's that in-between time. You're found guilty, and now then there's like this time gap between when the judge makes the sentence 
and then you're executed or cuffed and thrown in jail. That's where the church age is. The devil was sentenced. The law was nailed to the cross, the, or uh, convicted. The sentencing happens in the return, right? The first coming of Jesus Christ was the conviction. And he took on all of our sin. And the law was nailed to the cross. And now the enemy cannot use that and cannot have authority over the church. But the sentencing of Satan, the Antichrist, the beast, and all the enemies of God and Israel, that happens when he comes back as king. And you, the only way that that can happen is if he opens the seals of the book of Revelation. Right now, the authority is the the enemy is the prince of this world. Adam and Eve gave it over to Satan. Jesus accomplished everything that needed to be accomplished to regain Adam's authority. That now now Jesus is the last Adam, the second Adam, the last Adam. He has now claimed authority grab the keys and he has authority now over the earth he's preparing a place for us and when the fullness of the Gentiles come in the door is gonna close and Jesus will open the deed the scroll that is up in heaven is the deed to the earth and when he opens it up there's a lot of weird stuff that's gonna happen and those are judgments. Pop, 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 pop. And then the king returns and ends it. That's why it's so exciting. That's why it's so amazing. Because all of the questions, the problem of evil, the problem of pain, we need miracles, we need... The earth is in travail, solar flares, and, you know, the manipulation of devils and demons and aliens and then terrorism and whatever it, the deception that's going on earthquakes wars rumors of wars all those things they will come to an end when Jesus comes back and claims to be king and sits on his throne and then on David's throne on earth for a thousand years so we're all waiting for it. I mean, if you're a born-again Christian, I I can sympathize a little bit with people who don't touch prophecy, don't think about the return of Jesus Christ much. Because when I was a young Christian, I was scared of it. I was like, Ew, the book of Revelations, I don't understand it. What are these dragons there? What is these monsters? And there's angels and demons. And I was really afraid of it. I pray in Jesus' name that if you approach prophecy and the return of Jesus Christ, to look at it as it's our hope and our victory over death, the devil, and all the problems. It's hope and victory. I always read it as like scary war. And I gave the enemy way too much power in my mind. So, approach it. Everything that we do as a Christian can be approached with like total peace and rest. It's not our war. It's Jesus' battle. And he's already won. So you have to approach it from a position of uh, all victory. It's already, you know the, the score of the end of the game. So if you're watching the Super Bowl and you don't know the score, it can be thrilling like if, you, if you're really invested into the home team, you know. Oh, man, come on, come on. Or a boxing match and you want this guy, he's getting beat up. It's like, oh, my God, is he going to make it? But if you are watching, like, the 1985 Broncos-Giants Super Bowl, or maybe 85 was 49 ers Bengals. I don't know. One of those. 
You already know who won. So it's not as thrilling, but it still could be cool. It's like, oh, wow, look at that old face. But if you know the winner, it's not going to thrill you to the bone. And that's the same thing with prophecy. And we got to remember that. It's already from a seat of victory. So you can laugh at it. I have to, I'm, re, you know, I'm remembering that now as we speak. Isn't that great peace? Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you, Jesus said. Not the peace of the world that requires your work or effort. Jesus' peace is free. And it can only be received freely. Any sort of man's effort is no longer the peace of Jesus. It's sit down, receive freely. That's the only way that it works. Because that separates authority. Not you. You're naked, broken, and poor. You're just an ant. I'm just a little man. And one angel can crush me to the ground. And we were made a little lower than the angels. And in due time, God will lift us up. And that's the rapture and glorified body coming soon to a theater near you.